My name is Tito Rutaremara. I was born in Rwanda. I was born in 19, 1944. I'm sure your mother was not yet born. <laughs> And uh, he was born in uh, the east, Gatsibo, the now the district of Gatsibo. It used to be called in the Chibungo territory. Now, see, I was born and then I studied primary here in, in Rwanda in Gatsibo. Then I studied secondary school in St. Andre. Uh, I was, in fact, I was in the second, in the second year when we were, when we became refugees to Uganda. When we became refugees in 1959, between 59 and 67, with our parents, we, we hoped that we would go back to Rwanda. And in fact, we stayed more than five or six years, hoping that we'll come back. In uh, 87 uh, in December, Arapi was born and uh, put the structures. At first, the uh, chairman was a civilian, but later on, uh, he became Fred, he was the chairman. Then, we st after that, we built the, the structures of the Arapi. Mm -hmm. Then, he had to get that protocol card that we call the protocol card they had to get tools of analysis. By that time we had, we said, we put there the structures from the cell branch, we had the second, and the region. Region means the country, and sometimes the country is big, put it there some parts like in Israel, Tanzania, which is big, we are having three. Uganda was two because of the population was big. In Israel, there were four because the country is big, four regions. Then you go down and you put them in a series of people around. Arusha, in a real sense, if you started the, the negotiations, the negotiations in fact were not started by us, no, 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 they started by uh, and the Rwanda in 1993. So when we signed the, in, in, in Arusha, the, the agreement signed by the champion over APF on the, the president of Rwanda. Uh, it is the Aga, August 1993. And we were supposed to, to come in November to come to Rwanda, I mean to come and make an, uh, uh, they negotiated the, the uh, one government, uh, one parliament, start negotiating, uh, building one, uh, uh, one army. But of course, the Rwanda government was started refusing uh, to allow it. It delayed until uh, and the minuar came to take us from Murindi, where the politicians were going to be members of parliament and members of the, the cabinet. And they having in, uh, and the 300 who are supposed to, to defend us, to defend the, the politician, the politicians who were there. We came, and again, the man went on refusing to. Uh, to put the, that government of you know, coming from the Arusha agreement. Uh, until, uh, again, that we, we had the problems in the, when we were negotiating, in fact, in 1993, they, they went on massacring people. They, they killed people in Bujesera, they killed people in in a big way and so on, they went on killing people. And he said, now we are negotiating for peace and you go on killing. Then we attacked. You remember the one which we attacked in Niger? Um, and um, we came near here in Shilonje. But again, people tell us well, we have to go back because if we wanted to, to renegotiate, because we had been negotiating 
Then he went and back to in order to, to go and negotiate with the winter negotiating until he signed the, the negotiation. But the, again, the, as I told you, the Uganda government, the, the German was refusing it. And, and um, until he, he had the, these people make, made pressure on him until he went to sign. Uh, this time he's going to put down, uh, to put down the government and uh, uh, to make institutions work in uh, the government and the, uh, the parliament. Mm -hmm. And when he, he was coming from Marussia where he had signed it, uh, he was, his uh, pain was uh, shot mm -hmm. down. Uh, when a dictator is having uh, fighting and he, at the end he says, I'm going to negotiate it's because he's uh, suffering. If we, he knew that we are strong, that's why he started negotiating. But of course, negotiations, they, uh, they didn't want them. At first, they wanted people to help them defeat us. And they found that it was near impossible. And even they, they found that people were telling them, if you don't negotiate, they are going to, to take Chigari. Please negotiate. They went on pushing them, mm. but they didn't. Want, they never wanted to to do it. Mm. But as the people, uh, the, the pressure we were making on them, the pressure of the political parties were making on them in the, in the manifestations and the, the pressure of the army were putting on them and some the diplomats and everywhere. Uh, and uh, their friends were saying, if we don't do it, they, are going, they will take the whole country. Please. Negotiate when you are still uh, where you can have, when you are, can stay in, a bit in control. And now it's when we went there, then the, uh, his people shot him down in the morning, I mean that evening, that night. They started me making genocide. Uh, uh, after the crash, because the genocide started. Now, RPF said, and they wrote even to the international community, and they even wrote to those people, please stop genocide. If we don't stop genocide and go on killing people, we are going to start the war. We are no longer in a peace, I mean, in a, in a, in a peace agreement. If we go on, uh, I mean, killing people. Of course, there was no, no reply, either internationally or nationally. Then, when the, the, the army commander said, Now we are going to stop the genocide, Rapif now said, We are starting the war to stop the genocide. Because you don't want to stop it, we are going to start the war to stop the genocide. And that the decision was taken. It was again starting the war, but this time to stop genocide. You know, the stopping genocide means uh, you stop it, but you get orphans, you get people who, who are uh, injured, yes. you get old men and women, people who are suffering. Who, with trauma and so on. Mm -hmm. Then you have to get them in a, in a place where you have to give them security, give them food, give them medicine, medical, medical and so on. You see, even that type of bring, but not only that, even these, the other one, these who are not either suffering, who are not being attacked on genocide, who are on the other side, who are not, who didn't fear any, uh, who are not, uh, who are not supposed to be, uh, to, uh, to be massacred. They were, who are remaining there, we had to put them somewhere, give them the security, and they try, because many into the and the others would be inside, and try to, to get that security for them and so on. That problem, <laughs> That time, that 
that was a work of military, bring them back, cadres, take them inside, look for food, get their medicine, look for the, I mean, in the, the security side and so on. Whenever it, it is a big problem, they call men to come back and help and so on, you see. Those are the things that we, we are doing, the, the whole thing, whenever a party is liberated, even the those in, which is not yet liberated, we are having some people whom they bring and they put them there to give them security and everything and so on where it would be. Those who are fans, the older people, people who are injured, people who are looking for food, looking for uh, medicine. As we were moving towards the, the end, it's where we started bringing in uh, uh, population, I mean, a refugee, all the refugees of because we wanted them to come and help. They helped those cadres, to help other people. And indeed, when they came, they helped because they were living with others, those who are, because they are not, they are, they are members of our people, they don't know what to do helping in mobilization, helping in uh, uh, getting food for these people, helping in getting medicine. And even they helped a lot in bringing in uh, uh, commerce uh, things, because you see, everything was destroyed. No, no things in the market and so on. Now those people were coming from outside, from Burundi, from Zaire, from Uganda. They started bringing in, uh, in uh, thing, goods. And the other things that people were, then they, they, they were going to, coming from, uh, the, the, I mean the trade started within Uganda, with the Congo, with the Burundi, with the Kenya, but people bringing in. The, the first refugees came like that one, and the RPF is the one who, who brought them. I mean the RPF locally, they were organizing themselves, and the uh, people participating in bringing people, in, uh, getting uh, sometimes the other people was only giving either uh, uh, lorries or sometimes they giving and it was a few. But otherwise, the people would sit down and were up if members sit down and uh, participate and bring all people who wanted to come and uh, bring them to Rwanda. And again, uh, people kind of were here putting them in the, in the areas where to be, in the areas where to come and so on. And, uh, they were the ones bringing in life. We were bringing them to come to bring in life because there was no life. We started by, the, for instance, the army. There were about 1,500 1, men who, who didn't want to go with others. We stayed at the big group there. We brought them and they were integrated with their, uh, with their labels, if it's a general, it's a general, it's a canoe, it's a canoe, and with the fun functions, doing their function, if it's a head of a unit, it becomes a head of, if it's a head of a division, then you see, we integrate them, by integrating them, giving them their function with their, uh, their, I mean, if it's a general, it becomes the general, it's a kind of a lieutenant and so on. And having the, if he was a, uh, an, a division leader, he becomes a division leader. If he's a, a, someone doing on, a, on a, this department, and he would do his work. And they were very well integrated. Uh, and that's one, uh, the first one. Uh, the second we did, of course, it is to bring people, political parties together and say, only as a political party, MDR and the SED, they are the ones who are, not, uh, who are not brought together. But members of all the political parties, we brought them to, together and they said, come and make together institutions, uh, one government and one parliament. We brought them together. And even we were integrating the members of uh, MDR, I mean MRND, who are not, uh, whom, who are not, who didn't commit genocide, or whom they didn't see committing genocide, like members of 
uh, embassies, the ambassadors they were everywhere, everywhere. We were, they were called back to come and sit down and make a, a one government and one uh, parliament uh, to, to bring to get together and so on and the power, power sharing. Those are the biggest things that we started doing. In, Again, the security of people was the paramount. Because you can't do anything if there is a security. You know, if military people and the Naram are still fighting within the country, have to, to give that security. But of course, you have to give the security of people and their property. That means that we, we, we give, at least these people had to be where to put. I mean, where to sleep, to be, a house and so on. And again, they had to get food, had to get medicine. Who can say that a person is in a security if he, 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 doesn't, he, he, he doesn't have the basic needs? The first thing was to look for that, to, to make a government of unity, to make the army of unity, and start uh, giving security looking for the best needs of those people. Those are the first things that we are doing, looking for the best needs of those people. And again, because we, are, we wanted to, to say, wanted to, uh, because we wanted to, all wanted to come together and start building our national unity. It all went straight, you know, we brought, we are the only country, by the way, we are not the only, organization that brought all refugees without getting help from outside. We brought the 19, 19, I mean, 59 refugees, all the refugees who are in those countries brought them back. But again, we went to bring back, we went to, to Burundi to bring many thousand, that were more, around 700,000 who in Burundi to bring them back. We brought back those who are in Tanzania and Binako and so on. We brought them back. Of course, the ones in, uh, who are about one million or two, around two million in, in, in the Congo, uh, the Congo government uh, refused. They resisting and so on. And the, the government of uh, MDR, the former state, I mean the former government of Rwanda were there. Because they are people and the army, they were there. And again, the, the Zayan government was in, in, in control. The French people were helping them. Then they refused. Then we had to go there and bring them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, put these people, push these people who are, for, who are not letting them come. And pushing them, then tell people to come. Uh, and it will bring them and say, no. uh, by force, but no, it wasn't by force because it, it, some went on. Some went on, they are still in the, they are in the forest. Some went on, we were only getting them from, from the forest. Some, because we went on looking for them for, for the forest and they could bring them back. Now you had to bring them back and, and, and those are the main things that we are doing because it, then, because we wanted to start looking, I mean, getting the basic needs of these people and trying to build our unity and we go on to do other things uh, of economy, of justice, and uh, of good governance, of uh, everything you see, good governance. And, uh, welfare of people, the welfare of people. But those are the people who went on. The biggest things that we are to, first to do is that one. And usually the liberation has to go to phases, steps and phases. You know, you know the, there is a, the, the phase of uh, preparation. That one where I told you how we went on getting ideas, getting ideology and the political, uh, 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 political orientation. It needs, it needs time. 
Then that is a phase. Another phase is a where, where you, uh, you have to remove the dictator, the war. That is another phase. But, it, but in that phase, when you remove the, the dictator, then you have to first to recover things that has been destroying. I mean to rebuild the things that has been destroying. That the images, it's another phase. Then after that phase, you have to, to sit down and say, what to do? How am I going to, to build my, my country? So when we call the people in, in Nuguino, then we see people discuss which one that we want. Then afterwards, we had the phase of building the, the foundation, building the institutions, um, the, the, I, I mean, a big, I mean a, uh, putting the, down the institutions, uh, building the institu new institutions, and uh, uh, reorganizing the old ones, putting there the system, which system of democracy, the constitution, putting there the constitution, decentralizing the, uh, to giving power to the people by decentralizing, and many other institutions and the laws, the new laws and so on. Where you have to be, that, that is, and again, putting down the all institutions that are helping us to have uh, economy, on the economy, again, you know, education, on health, those are the things that are building the, that foundation. In uh, education, having a universal education, universal health, laws, um, basic, base, base, the basic needs of economical basics, basics uh, where we have to start from. That is the, the period up to 2006, 7, 8. But afterwards, when we are, we are having that basic, now we are building. We are now building. Um, now we are building our economy. The good governance is there. We are still building it and making it the health and so on. I mean, welfare, but especially the economy and so on. We are now. now that is a phase. And when you, you reach that phase, you go on giving you the vision taking now. You had it vision 2020, saying now. We are now, we are from the lowest, poor, let us be at least an income, a middle income. That's what we tried to do. To, now from that one, of course, we say that now in 20, we will be a higher middle income. And we want to be in the 50, vision of 2050, to be a higher income, I mean to reach the other ones. Now that journey, that is another step of reaching, liberating our people. Because Rwanda who is liberated is that Rwanda who, who see Rwanda as his home, who is proud of his home, who which who has got the economy that is going to help him to get a job, a good job, to help him to be uh, in health, to help him to, to get the schools for his children and so on, and uh, to, be, to have a, if he's a, a man who is going to, re, to retreat, I mean to, to pension, to have at least a pension which is, can help him to live well and be on the level of, of other big countries like this, America, Singapore, Japan and so on. Mm. That's when, if a Rwandan is now saying, now I'm, I'm a Rwandan, I don't want to be American, I don't want to be Japanese, they are like me. They, they don't have what I don't have. I can have what I have. I have them. It's when Rwanda will be liberated. It's a struggle from from down up to that one. We are still 
on the move. Those phases we have reached them as we wanted. Some, some areas we did a bit higher, but in the other areas a bit lower. But the, the general was that we are above what we were expecting. It's why I tell you that we are still on the road. You see, we are there because we've got two things that, I mean, three things that has helped us. You see, first of all, to, to come and, uh, and try to build our uh, unity, because when you are united, uh, you work. It is, it is still difficult to, I mean, it gets you difficult to make people work and so on. But when they start, they work together and they, it moves very quickly. That's when we succeeded. And again, that another thing is that we are uh, having a young nation that is the, the young youth who, who are now who understand the problems and who are quick and better, and the leaders who started our our struggle are the ones who went on. They were young. Yeah. Then things, the ideas came from the young generations and they're still the young generations and so on. Though they are becoming older, of course. <laughs> but they, they moved with it. Yeah. They moved with, with that one. It was in the hands of people who accepted the change. Because we, older we are, we, we become the conservative. But the younger you are, you accept the change. That one. Another, the third one, of course, we have got a leader, a, a, a real, a visionary leader who see further than we are, who knows how to organize, uh, who knows how to, to mobilize people, uh, to encourage people to work and so on. Who, who is above the, the international level. In fact, he's uh, above the international level. We, go, we get that chance of having that. Those three things are the ones who helped us to reach where we are. Life is going to change the way it was working. Life is go, it is, it's coming from the, the physical energy to the intellectual energy. They, they are ready to enter that force industrial revolution because the life is going to change it is no longer to be like that one we are now starting with the little minutes we have we are prepared and so on and the rpf is doing it we have the chairman our chairman of rpf is the one the president i was telling you the one who is having who is above the international level but that the president of the country you are the, is the one who is the chairman of Arab PF. Mm. Then the Arab PF, we are working under him. Of course, in the Arab PF itself, it, uh, it has even uh, tenters with it uh, because it has got its own uh, uh, business where it is mobilizing, putting the uh, artificial intelligence and so on, uh, or, or, or robotics to work. And, uh, 